The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. You've always got time for short time. Hey, it's Mario Lopez. David Taylor. Fred Metcalf. Johnny Hendricks. Tony Ramos. Bubba J. Mike Gold. Matthew Modine. The one and only Chael Sonnen. And you are listening to the one and only Short Time Wrestling Podcast by the often imitated and never duplicated Jason Bryant. In case you're wondering, that was that was Justin Harry Lester saying no. As I've turned on the recorder here during lunch, day one of the Cadet World Championship, Zach Dominguez over here just laughing. Gary Mayab's eating uh, eating watermelon. His bride will be happy to know that he's eating healthy here in, in Athens. What we won't tell her is how many euros he's eaten in the last 24 hours. Matt Lindland, well, he's Matt Lindland, so. As we're sitting around, and we're going to get Harry talking here in a minute. Shaking his head. Thinking about his grudge match with Jordan Burroughs a couple years ago and the greatest YouTube video ever made. Zach, your thoughts? (laughs) On the grudge match, it would have been great to see, man. I would have enjoyed seeing that, but, you know, Jordan blew it. From a Greco point of view, Jordan blew it. Double legs, typically, it's caution, too. So, Harry should have won that match big time. You can't ever trust a man that wants to touch you below the waist. It's the way I see it. So, that's where I'm at. This is going to be a very interesting short-time wrestling podcast. Harry, any, I, we, we we're drawing you in here. I mean, thoughts on Zach's, Zach's point of view. I mean, it's kind of convincing. I totally agree. Yes. <laughs> There's nothing more you can say to that. It's, that's why I like women doctors, because... I, I just we're going to... We're gonna, uh, <laughs> Anyway, that's why this is my show and not USA Wrestling show. This you're not going to hear this on bonus points, but uh, Zach, since I'm sitting closest to you, uh, overall thoughts on uh, the the younger generation on this Greco-Roman thing here? Oh, I think it's a real bright future. Uh, these boys wrestled really, really well today. They uh, attempted moves. They scored points. Uh, we put a lot of emphasis in camps on scoring first. The, uh, you know, the first 42 seconds, getting the points. Um, not being reactionary, not waiting. Um, and they, they went out and they got after it. You know, they scored points. They lost matches. They won matches. But you know what? We're not, we're not holding our tail between our legs anymore. We're going out. We're getting after it. We, we want everybody to know. But yeah, we're here to score points, and we're here to win matches in, in the end. May have just chugging that peach juice right now. He's, he's enjoying his time in Athens. The one thing that we've seen here in the first couple hours of competition, and we'll talk to Matt Lindell on this in a minute, but uh, – these kids are just locking and going, man. This is how Greco's supposed to be, with the exception of when you're like, you know, like the I saw Austrian out there up six nothing gets decked. That happened a couple times, <laughs> and uh, oh, I'm up eight oh. Oh, well, you can't be up eight oh, but up six oh, about to turn. Up, oh. crazy things happen here. The cadets are just uh, letting it fly. Yeah, they're uh, they're not holding back. They're you know they're turning headlocks, arm spins, body locks over, getting after it, enjoying you know enjoying their time on the mat putting it all together and doing what we've shown them, and, and they're really coming together as a good team. Our first half looks really good. I hope our second half looks as good. We got one in the semis and two waiting for their wrestle back to get in, and I, I believe they'll be back in and, and running for third place. Harry, welcome to the coaching world. I mean, one time I do recall a time that you were coaching in Fargo, and uh, you were quickly escorted out of the facility after round one after receiving multiple yellow cards. How much have you improved as a coach since then? Pretty good. I made it through the first round here, so uh, no, it's a uh, it's a lot different, and um, you got to be a lot calm because it's not about you anymore, you know. So I realize that it's it's about the you know the wrestlers now, but that's it, great. I love doing it, and you know my time up as a wrestler, so it's it's time to coach now. Yeah. So how does this work with your career in the army? In terms, you you know you didn't get a chance to compete in the Olympic trials. Uh, you got hurt, and then now you you stepped away from from the actual competitive nature of it, and coaching so how does this work with WCAP and, and what you're doing now I'm not in WCAP anymore so I'm completely out of the army um I finished out my contract and now I'm back home in Ohio and coaching a high school team and a club team um and luckily the school that I work for they're you know very lenient with my time and 
I got a chance to come here and, and um, help coach and, you know, be with some of the guys that I coach throughout the year. So it's a great opportunity. Actually, I heard you were back in Ohio. Brain farted on that. Where are you at again? Akron, Ohio. So I'm at uh, St. Vincent St. Mary High School. Okay, so the, the, the high school that has one Rocco Capone as an alum and LeBron James. Yes, both of them. So I'm actually working with Rocco's dad now to redo our room and all kinds, all kinds of stuff. So we'll have some wrestling in one part of the building, and then the rest is LeBron's. I did, I did once recall announcing the Beast of the East where Rocco was in the finals, and he had put was in math class with LeBron James on his, his brag sheet. Now, you're familiar with the brag sheets. Of course, you've been in many finals. But what people didn't know is LeBron put down he was in, he was in math class with Rocco Capone on his NBA draft letter. A lot of people don't know that. <laughs> well, there you go. There you go, representing the wrestlers. So, But it, it's good. I, I, and I love the school. I love the, the atmosphere that we built there. And it's a, it's a basketball school, but they love all their sports. So everybody supports everybody there. What is the role now for you to try to real? I mean, Ohio's got good Greco-Roman wrestlers, but we don't you really see them a uh, whole lot at the senior level. You have the junior success, and then they go to college. It's that's it's where a lot of colleges are coming to get get athletes for the for the collegiate style of wrestling. And uh, you know, you see that the stars go through in, in freestyle. But what's it going to take to to get some of those studs in Ohio to be like, yeah, we've got them stud. We got studs here. Let's let's just make them Greco studs too. Well, we just have to implement an interest. Really, and keep their interest. We get them on these uh, these tours, these world championships, training throughout the year, and just let them know that there's something out there besides college. Um, even if you're really good at folk style, freestyle, you might love Greco better. You know, that's what happened to me. Just love Greco better, and I went that route. If we can get some of the guys who actually love it and put their hearts into it, and they realize, hey, I can start this uh, Olympic dream a lot sooner, then that's what we need to do. And Getting into colleges, so I'm going to be working with Ohio State at their RTC, training uh, Greco down there and things like that. So that's the first step. Yeah, and with the, with the RTC, so many of them are freestyle. Like uh, with what Kerry Regner had tried to start up, well, has, has started up at Williams before he left to go to Millersville, like a Greco-Roman college program. Northern's got the Olympic training site. From your perspective going through Northern and now seeing what, what Kerry had launched at Williams Baptist, what do you think that type of program has in terms of benefits for USA Wrestling? Well, it's great. It gives us another option um, for guys to further, further their education. At the same time, you know, that was a big thing for me. I wanted to get my education. And I think that's a big thing for a lot of parents when they see their kids. Um, you know, they want to push them. Hey, you got to get your education. And the only route before was to wrestle folk style. Um, now we have the options of going Greco, and that's something Kerry set up and carefully thought out, and, it, and it's working. If we can get that to spread, then we're going to have a great opportunity to uh, continue to, to get the better guys that uh, think they have to go folk style. Now we can get them into a Greco system right away. As we're going to hop up, Harry, thanks for the time. Excuse me, Justin, Deshaun, Lester. Harry's not even your middle name. Anyway, thanks for the time. We're going to go over and talk to Lindland as he, uh, he's looking very satiated after his uh, bowl of food there, drifting around. As we're, we're doing the walk here, in case you're wondering, as Gary may have, we'll talk to Gary in a second. Oh, Rich is gonna gonna give me some room here. I'm gonna put I'm gonna put the mic in front of Matt Lindland here. So, how was the spread for lunch? Uh, I was all right. It was it was salmon, but then I grabbed my own and they started screaming at you. Like, <laughs> like what's the protocol here? You can grab you can grab the other food, but you can't grab salmon. I think the fruit and the salad is open game, but. Oh, don't touch the entrees. They've got a guy specifically for that. And don't tell the, the Iranian coaches. They just jump right in front of you and take it anyway and start yelling. Oh, yeah, they'll push you out of the way. They're a little, a little feisty here. At least some of these guys look like they've never eaten the way they act. Well, it's the wrestlers, a lot of them haven't, but they make the same day weigh-in. So this is the last trial event of the two-day system. Uh, we're only halfway through it. What do you think so far about how this could work with the senior level? Well, it's going to work with the senior level. This is what it's going to be. and. I know, it's a little goofy, but um, it's what it is. So. A little bit of a throwback for you, though? Uh, oh, yeah. I get, um, no, I, ne I never wrestled with that system. Uh, I think I was – I think they started that in 97. I graduated in 93, so. Gotcha. Yeah, you know what? My, my brain's all, all messed up right now because Harry just threw me for a loop with all his great Greco knowledge. But as we talk about 
the action that we've seen here, it's stark contrast to a week ago where we saw a lot, speaking generally of Greco-Roman, not American Greco-Roman, but overall like 1-0, oh, 1-1, and 2-1, and we're seeing 2-1 to one <laughs> matches that are decided just like all it is is a referee raving his hand. You see a lot of action out here, whether it's, whether it's big throws for and against the United States. These kids are out here, and they're wrestling and there's there's 17 falls that round. I think there are 23 texts. A lot of action. Well, I, I think I, I said, why are we messing with the rules to create more actions in the senior level when we saw the same kind of action in the, at the juniors, you know, just a few weeks back. Um, you just let these young athletes matriculate onto the seniors and, you know, they'll they'll push these guys that just want to block and, and and get a one point passivity call. So these guys, these young guys, when they matriculate into the senior level, they're gonna push those guys out with the new rules. But now we gotta change it again. So uh, <laughs> I, I I guess I just don't understand that philosophy. What's one thing that you've noticed in just the first couple hours with, with just the American kids that, have, that look you know, they're going out there, they're they're throwing those, they're getting falls. This is uh Future looking good here, even though the performance right now probably isn't what you know you're looking for 100. percent Well, I'm sure it was disappointing to see Ridge lose that match when he had the guy off the mat and set him back down. But I mean, they're scrapping, they're they're getting after it. I mean, Phillips looked great, both you know, both his matches till he got gave up those points in the parterre position. You know, he was winning. Uh, he won out won that first match by a tech fall. He going out there and scoring a lot of points. Second match, you know, he was up 4-0 and gave up a little takedown, but we got to work on our defense, continue to, to work on that, and it's still problematic of our of our system and our culture in America where we don't we don't focus on the international styles. You know, we go back to a high school and a college system. As soon as we're done with this tournament, we're going to lose most of these guys in, into that system. One thing that's been brought USA Wrestling, Joe Russell was a Greco guy brought on on the freestyle side, manager of programs, Gary Mayab. Now with Greco Rome, what's Gary done to, to kind of spice things up here at USA Wrestling in his short time there? <laughs> Gary's a workhorse, man. Uh, he's got a lot. Look at him right now. He's just he's deep thought. He's in deep thought right he's now. He's in deep thought. He's writing notes over there. He's he's reviewing film already. He's he's getting a lot done. Uh, but I think the biggest thing that Gary's going to do is help us create create our system within within our within our culture. He's going to help us create a a Greco Roman development system across the country and it's going to come down to you know still the coaches if they're going to implement that if they're going to continue to train in greco-roman styles or they're going to they're going to keep trying to do what worked 30 years ago 20 years ago oh you know we, we hear it all the time well i wrestled folk style and it worked like dude that was 100 years ago you're 100 years old uh times have changed athletes have changed you know every, everything's changing you know, but but we we're gonna stay the same and expect to get new results. No, we gotta we gotta change with the with the times, and we've got to focus on international styles at an earlier age. And I don't think cadet <laughs> is too early. I think that's that's when it's about time, especially if you've got athletes that are capable of making it not just to the world championships, but winning matches at the world championships. You know, they they got a huge upside and they got a, they got a lot of potential to to continue. We've got some of the best athletes in the world. But then they switch back to uh, an American system, and think, thinking that's going to still work because that's the way their coach did it, you know, back in the '80s or, or the '90s or whatever. But that it's not going to work now. You're here at the cadets. You're at the juniors. You're at the seniors. How important is it for Greco-Roman specifically to be able to have that continuity from the senior level to the grassroots levels and vice versa? Well, I think that's critical. I've been I've been at the juniors. I wasn't this year uh, at the juniors, but and this is my first year to the cadets. And uh, I, you know, I want to keep keep coming to these these youth events because that's exactly what what we need to do is have some continuity in our system and the way we train from cadet age group all the way to senior age group. And in terms of USA Wrestling revamping kind of its structure. Uh, Cody Bickley's kind of been the high performance manager and then bringing on, you know, Gary and Joe for the respective styles. How much have you seen the whole organization, freestyle, Greco, women, benefit from, from that structure? Well, we saw it this year with the world championship. You know, I think Zeke Jones laid that foundation. Um, they certainly hired the right guy with, with uh, Coach Zadig. Um, to continue that tradition, he was definitely part of that. Being being in the developmental side of that, and just moving him up to uh, to the senior and the national team 
you know, position. Um, you know, he was a part, a huge part of helping Zeke put that together because now we're seeing those athletes that came through that system. They, you know, they were doing this years before I, I got here. Um, and I guess without really looking at so much what they, what they were doing, but it's like, now I'm seeing the, the results of that. I'm like, wow, great. That's what we were doing. So at least we're heading to the, on the right direction with, with our youth guys. And, you know, I, I really feel like, you know, we're, we're heading the right direction with our program. Our athletes are, are still pretty young, but they're in the pipeline now. We've got them in there. They're not, a lot of them are, aren't in the folk style system. We've got them out. And I think that's going to be the key to uh, having our success is moving these athletes out of that, that folk style rut because it's what it is. It's, it's just they're getting stuck in the mud. It's a, it's a rut. And uh, you gotta, you got to take a different path. Now, looking, there's been a lot of talk about the weight class changes and such as far as a freestyle team where people are salivating that, oh, wow, we can get Burroughs, Dake, Taylor, Cox, Snyder in the lineup. What's the weight change going to do for Greco-Roman? Have you, have you given much thought that where guys are going to start shifting and sitting around and be like, okay, well, we can get these guys in the lineup now. We're not going to be in a situation where, say, you have Bay and Manville sitting sitting one, two, one's on a junior team, one's on a senior team, both at 20 years old. Bay, Manville, Chavez, <laughs> you know, and then you got then you got down down the lower weights, you know, you've got Lamont, you got Tuma, they can separate. I mean, yeah, that's exactly what I, what we're we're looking at. You know, I was hoping they were going to implement those for U23. Um, so we could we could really put a good lineup together, uh, but you know this way we're going to end up leaving some guys home because there's still only eight weight classes until January, and I think we're still going to have some of our older seniors are going to try to find themselves on those teams. But uh, the the future is bright with these young guys, and yeah, we're going to be able to separate them. But then we go back to six weight classes, so it's going to be those guys that that take those Olympic spots that are that are really going to have the advantage. Um, but yeah, if you're up or down a weight, you, you're gonna have to move. You're gonna have to cut, or you're gonna have to grow one of the two um, come 2020 time. But that it does increase our depth quite a bit, Jason. So I think a bird just crapped on Dominguez. <laughs> what kind of f- that's Frico right there? That's Frico. Frico, Frico. He didn't take any shit from anybody except for the birds. Again, this is my show. I can say that, but. As, as we, we work through uh, day, day one, day two, how has the, the preparation with this group been leading up to Athens? I mean, this is, this is a historic city. Wrestling was basically established here at 706 B.C. or whatever. I don't know. I was up at the Parthenon, the Acropolis yesterday going, man, Gary Abbott covered cadets when Moses won down here. I mean, this is a historic place. You got like one of the birthplaces of sport in the Olympics. I mean, do these kids really understand how how, how – Athens plays a role in wrestling? Well, I think they're very cognitive of what's going on here and where they're at. And, you know, the fact that they're wrestling in the venue that the Olympics were held in. I think all those things are significant. We actually talked about those events. We went to the Olympic Stadium. We went to uh, the Parthenon. We got some uh, team group pictures up there. Good workout, too. It was a little hike up there, you know. I mean, it was day before weigh-in, so, you know, it it didn't hurt to get them up there and, you know, sweat it out a little bit, but uh, yeah, I think that was part of part of the reason we wanted to take them up there to to really see the significance of this. But you asked me about the training this summer, and I think that was that was a very significant um, thing that we've done because we had more the cadets, and I, and I've said I think we touched them more, but but you you got safe sport now, and you don't want to be touching your athletes in that you know that sense or use that vernacular. But we've had more contact with our with our cadet age group than ever before we've, we've had him in just the training center three weeks we've also had some of our top coaches working with them outside of those those camp opportunities but they were training alongside the seniors they were training alongside the juniors in their preparation and it's raised their level immensely um, we still got some some bad habits we gotta we gotta break entirely but the way these guys competed today there there was certainly they were prepared well um, and they were us in Greco Roman all summer so it was a lot of fun now we're walking around talking about some of the, the Greco-Roman people here. I mean, you yourself had world Olympic level success, but uh, I don't know. I mean, he's a little above your weight class. Mike Bowman walking around here as a developmental coach for for Germany, world Olympic champion. And whoa, you know, who, who do you think would get the better of the go right now? You or him? <laughs> <laughs> we're, we're wrestling Greco still. Uh, 
Oh, Mike still looks like he's he's pretty fit. None of this dirty boxing that you're known for. He, he looks like he's still pretty fit and in shape, but I think I'd give him a go for sure. Well, again, you're touching on that a little bit. This is a guy that's got, you know, he's revered in the world in Greco-Roman, and he's coaching the developmental leagues in Germany. I mean, you've seen there's some Germans at the at the at the juniors that had success. We've got a I got a couple out there right now that are having good good events. What's it mean when you see other countries bringing their greats in to coach the developmental guys? Well, it tells you we're logical, on the right? we're on the right track. It's logical if we're going we want these athletes to find their way to the senior stage. We got to start working with them now. We got to start developing them. We got to get them the right competition. We got to get them the right training opportunities, and that's going to be more time, more trips overseas for our young athletes uh, across the board. We just need to can increase our number of trips we're making overseas. But yeah, I, I mean, I love seeing seeing all these guys, especially the guys that I grew up wrestling with. And Mike Bong was a guy I looked up to uh, when literally, I. Literally, he's tall. Yes, <laughs> literally. But uh, he was somebody I looked up to watching him wrestle. I mean, I remember my first trips to the Concord Cup, and he was just crushing dudes, and uh, it was a lot of fun. And you know, we saw what they did this year in uh, France. They had three medals. So Germany's really focused on that developmental age group, and it's paying off now. Matt Lemon, thank you very much. Bad, Jason. is part of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, head over to matttalkonline.com.